Welcome back. In the last video, I introduced addressable or intelligent fire alarm systems and explained the basics of kind of how they work and how they're wired. Uh, in this video, I want to expand on how the smoke detectors communicate um, and introduce a couple of other devices as well. So, if you don't remember how a photoelectric smoke detector works, you can go back and watch the video that I made on that. Um, and the the sensing element is the same in the addressable smoke detector. What's different is how it communicates that alarm with the panel. So what happens is the smoke detector is constantly communicating with the panel to make sure that first of all it's still on the circuit, it's still functioning, you know they're constantly talking back and forth. Um, but when smoke enters a chamber, it the, the smoke detector is not what decides whether or not it's an alarm. It doesn't tell the fire alarm panel, hey, I'm an alarm, or hey, there's smoke. Well, it kind of does tell it it's smoke, but what happens is it, it, gives it, um, it gives the fire alarm panel an analog value that represents the amount of smoke that's in the chamber. So in other words, it's constantly telling it how, you could say how dirty it is or how much smoke is in the chamber, and then the panel is what decides whether or not it goes into alarm. And the reason that's kind of significant is because you can, as a programmer, when you program these panels, you can set the sensitivity of the detector. And basically what that does is it will set like a certain threshold so that let's say, you know, a certain percentage of smoke would be, would not be an alarm for a certain detector, but then for another detector, maybe that would be enough to put it in alarm. And the reason for that is you know, maybe it's a high traffic area that you're putting the smoke detector in, like by the main entrance of a building. You don't want it to be very sensitive because there's going to be a lot of dust that gets in it um, and things like that. Whereas if it was in like a server room or a very clean environment where it's very important that you get that alarm signal as soon as you possibly can, you would set it for a higher sensitivity. So in the last video, I showed this spreadsheet. Um, and started to describe what type codes are. I explained how you could give the devices a label. Um, I started to touch on the control by event or the CBE right here, but I don't think it makes sense to get into that quite yet because I haven't introduced enough of the modules. I haven't explained how those work, different inputs and outputs. I think once I do that, it'll, it'll be a better time to introduce control by event. But you can see I've added sensitivity. So if I were a programmer, I could go into each one of these smoke detectors, I could set the sensitivity level. And on the notifier panels, it's just a numeric value. And that represents a certain amount of smoke in the chamber. Um, and I didn't really pick any rhyme or reason to these. Um, you know, it wasn't like, I, I just I just showed that you could put different values. And to you and I, like a, a range of 0 to 9 is, is pretty um, intuitive. And then that would represent a certain percentage of smoke for the uh, detector. So that's a pretty simple idea. I just wanted to show that that's how that works. It's not, it's not, again, I want to reiterate, it's not the smoke detector that tells the panel that it's an alarm. It's constantly communicating how much smoke is in its chamber, if any, and then the panel decides whether or not that's enough for an alarm. The next thing we're going to get into is monitor modules. So we've talked about in the first video, I showed pulse stations, I showed smoke detectors, and I showed heat detectors. But there are still, those were all addressable devices, so the panel could communicate with them directly. Um, it would check with the smoke detector, and like I said, the smoke detector would be giving it a value of how dirty it was, or how much smoke was in its chamber, etc. But there are still several devices that don't have, um, that aren't addressable. We're going to have to monitor sprinkler devices. Um, in a lot of cases, we monitor conventional heat detectors, and these devices don't, and there's other ones too. There's conventional duct detectors, um, there's kitchen suppression systems, and those are still all kind of uh, dumb devices or contact closure devices. So a monitor module is very simple. Its, it's purpose is an interface between a intelligent panel and a conventional device. So on one side of this module, let's say you had your your panel over here, 
and I can't really write with this, but, but well, it just never turns out real. But FACP, Fire Alarm Control Panel, would be over here, and this is an addressable panel. It would communicate directly with the module. So this would be like the data circuit going to the panel. Um, and this, this, this part number I wrote here, FMM1, this is a very basic monitor module. That part number is a notifier part number. Um, and basically one side of it is data. So I would set an address here, just like I showed in the last video. Let's say, let's see, what can I use here to make this more obvious? I'll go black. Let's say I had an arrow for the tens place is at zero, and the ones place is at, I don't know, looks like four. So this is address four, and then I would have to program this panel and say, okay, address four is, and then whatever it is. If it was a mon if it was a, a water flow switch, I would tell it it's a water flow. Um, if it was a valve tamper, I would tell it it's a valve tamper, and then that would have certain implications. It would probably be a supervisory signal, um, but we'll get that, into that in the future. So then, on, so that's the addressable side of it, and then the other side, these terminals. For right now, we'll just focus on terminals six and seven. This would be the conventional side. So from this side going out, it's almost like a conventional zone on a panel. But there are some there there is some differences, and there's there's a few different types of modules. So this would this can only use normally open contact closure devices. Um, that means it cannot use a conventional smoke detector that requires 20 vol 24 volts to operate, and I'll explain why. So let's say we had a device connected to this. I'm not gonna, well, I guess I can say positive and negative, and I'm not sure that these terminals are right. Oops, that didn't work. I'm not sure, I, I should have looked it up. I don't know which one's positive and which one's negative, meaning six or seven, but it really doesn't matter because these are always just contact closure, so polarity doesn't matter. But basically, let's say you had a, a conventional heat detector hooked up to this. You'd have the heat detector, and then you'd have your resistor, because again, this is a, now it's a conventional circuit from, from this side of the module, and it's looking for a certain amount of current. With that resistor in place, it gives it that certain amount of current that needs to be flowing. If something were to short across here, like a conventional device, whether it's a water flow, a valve tamper, a heat detector, you'd wire it common, normally open, and when the device activates, it will short, which would increase the current, and it would activate this module. This module would then tell the panel, hey, I'm, I'm activated, device four is activated. And then whatever I programmed it for, the panel, you know, then the panel would, would use that information. Kind of going back up to this spreadsheet. Imagine, like if this were a conventional pull station, uh, or a device, this was a device, uh, device four was a device in uh, on my spreadsheet. But, you know, you can imagine I had told it it was a water flow or whatever the case may be. It's going to say alarm, water flow, room 302, etc. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's scroll, let's scroll down a little bit more. I have tried to make this a little bit more clear down here. We'll do a little bit better job of, of actually drawing this. So here's my addressable fire alarm system. I have a monitor module and I have a water flow switch. So if I draw, if I hook up my SLC to terminals one and two, uh oh I'm in the wrong tool. I do that all the time. So I go from SLC to terminals one and two here. Now it's hooked up to my panel. I have to set an address. Let's just say I'm doing four again. So zero four. And again, this the way you'd set this, as I described in the last video, there'd be like you use a little screwdriver and you could just turn the dials to, to whatever. And this is the tens place, this is the ones place, so it would be zero four. And now I wire my circuit into my water flow. So I'd go common. These are the contacts on the water flow. Normally open. I put my resistor. So I go into my panel and I tell it, okay, device, there's module four. So M4 is a water flow switch and it is in the sprinkler room. So that information gets programmed into the panel and it always knows, okay, now when I'm checking my loop, I'm checking all the devices on this loop, I have to check for module four. And then module four is a water flow, it's in the sprinkler room. And there's a few more things I would program, but let's just stick with the basics. So right now on this SLC here, 
it's constantly looking for module four, module four, module four. If I were to cut a wire here and it didn't see module four, I'd get an invalid reply. If I were to cut a wire on the conventional side of this module, it's going to send a trouble. It's going to send an open circuit condition back to the panel. It's going to say, hey, I don't, you know, I don't have the proper amount of current flowing. There's a trouble. So it's going to say trouble, open circuit, water flow, and then whatever description I gave it, basement, pump room, etc. If it were to activate, if water starts flowing in this pipe, it's going to move this paddle up. The switch is going to change the states of these contacts. So now this normally open or the, you know, what was normally closed, both switches would change, but we're only using one of them for our panel. Now it's going to go to normally open, and if we follow our current, it's going to take the path of least resistance, right? So it's going to go, it's going to go th right across this dead short here, because there's virtually no resistance. So now this module is going to be activated. So now, the module is communicating to the panel, hey, I am activated, there's an active state. The panel's going to know that's a water flow, a water flow is an alarm, so the panel's going to go into alarm and say, well, you know, basement, pump room, water flow, alarm, the knacks are going to come on, etc. I think that's where I'm going to stop this video. I'll see you in the next one.